Hello and welcome to episode 52 of 15K Plus Random Movie Reviews, the podcast where we take random movies from Metacritic's all-time movie list. This is Colin. And this is Niall. And this is Random Movie number 10,426. It's a movie called Jetlag from 2002. It runs for an hour and 31 minutes. It's got a meta score of 53 and a user score of 6.2. It's got a budget of 13 million, but only a box office of 8 million. Oh, that hurts in the financials. Hurt, hurts in the argent. That's <laughs> no. the French word for money. I can't remember. Uh, directed by Danielle Thompson. Very non-French sounding name. She's directed a couple of french movies nothing i don't think uh, that had universal acclaim or anything like that but uh she wrote it with her son christopher thompson who from the look of imdb is more of an actor than he is a, a uh, director or a writer of movies yeah he had a role in pan's labyrinth which i thought could have been interesting if he was the eyeball monster hands he's not though no he's not he definitely is not the summary, obviously, this stars Jean Reno and Juliette Binoche. So you kind of look at that and go, oh, could be lovely. But when there is no plot and there is no storyline and the dialogue sucks badly, nobody can save it. Yeah, there's, you know, I have, I have seen the odd movie that's set basically in one room before. And it's been okay. Like, if you look at something like 12 Angry Men, that's an amazing movie set. 99% of the time in one room uh, and it's you know it, it's it it's a thriller the whole way through it just keeps you um, gripped this yeah <laughs> it's not enough happening there's not enough tension there's not enough it, it's just, just not enough happening it's just me. no and we were I think we've mentioned a couple of times in this podcast oh we need more backstory to care for the the characters but they actually try and attempt to do that but they, they still fail to make us empathize or sympathize or want to actually engage with the storyline in any way it just never yeah got i think going part of it is i don't like the felix character played by reno all that much um and i, I don't associate or I find nothing in common with myself and Juliette Binoche's character Rose. Um, <laughs> like, I, I, there's, there's nothing in it that interests me with either of the characters. And it's a bit, it's a bit challenging the way they develop the characters as well. Though it's quite stereotype typical and mm. yeah, but yeah, it's very oh, it's, 2D. It's, it, it's been done a thousand times, really. Has. Yeah, I was trying, to and think it's been of... done better. A thousand times. Yeah, I was thinking maybe they were trying to lost in translation at a bit. There's a couple of segues and thing plot devices that, that mirror. Yeah, but but the difference between this and lost in translation is there is stuff that happens and they go on an adventure together in that movie and they, they do you stuff. Know, they're they're mm. a, a pair of lost souls in that one who just get together and have a great time for a while and then depart ships in the night style thing. This. They argue for 90% of the movie uh, and, and then decide they like each other at the end. I love you. Oh, great. Yeah, let's get married or something. I don't know. Yay, yeah. screw the food business. Yeah. Oh, great. Um, the, yeah. The plot summary on Metacritic is very short, which sort of gives you a warning that maybe there's not a lot to write about the movie. The summary is a romantic comedy about an encounter at the Paris airport between a world-weary businessman and a troubled beautician and I have, I have a massive problem with that plot definition and and the word comedy is comedy. my problem i i don't know if i smiled very often nah. in this um i certainly didn't giggle there was, there was zero <laughs> guffaws <laughs> uh, you've got a laugh on i do you? indeed it's, a, it's in the back of the room here it's got yeah. a big hand Arrow, that flings up yeah, yeah. <laughs> glitter and glue yeah uh well, anyway, so it starts off, it's sort of, you don't know what you're looking at at the start of the movie, but it slowly zooms out. You're looking at uh, Felix's eye mask on the plane, and obviously there's lots of airplane noises and the usual stressful screams of kids and blah, blah, blah. And we Standard airplane stuff. Standard, yeah. We quickly, Listen, I'm going to say this just because I've spent my, the last 20 years flying a lot and being in airports a lot 
I would love an air, uh, uh, airport slash airplane movie, which is called Jet Lag and actually portrays the stress and anxiety of jet lag and also just traversing and getting around the obstacles of airports and, and flight. I think there's definitely a, a space for that. Some, um, something like, I know there's absolutely nothing to do with airplanes and, and airports, but a movie like Insomnia, where you have this horrible feeling of not sleeping properly and it's mm. just, oh God, everything crap. Um, yeah. But there's nothing like that in this. It's They're supposed to be very, two very tired individuals in this because they've got jet lag. Um, but that never really comes across other than Renault passing out a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's got a bit of a heart issue. So yeah, his role, his character is Felix. He's introduced, and so is uh, Rose introduced via them on one side of phone conversations, multiple phone conversations. Mm. And I was very confused at the start. Like, what do you do? Who are all these people you're talking to? I don't understand what's going on. And it's that sort of level of introduction to the plot where I don't I don't care for that. I don't want to be confused. It, yeah, it, it's kind of awkward. It really Very. felt like an awkward introduction. And that's not how you do it, in my head. Yeah. Not, not that I'm a director. Uh, but if, it's, if the introduction to the characters isn't simple and doesn't get you directly in there, if you have to spend so long trying to figure out what they are and what they do and what their main character flaws and in, in interesting pieces are then it's 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 a, a drudge for the watcher to you know go through that process and yeah it it, it, it hampers the movie massively yeah and so it, it cuts from rose to felix felix to rose they're they've got their own stories we don't really know what they're talking about and so in my review notes i've got nothing down here i'm like going i don't know what they're talking about on the phone each of their phone calls uh, she quickly flushes her phone down the toilet by accident and we're supposed to go, eh. <laughs> Oh, that was the comedy, was it? Yeah, that's the comedy. <laughs> I missed, in the summary. I missed that. <laughs> uh, and also it's, it's showing this montage of stressful characters and there's this terrible tubular bell soundtrack happening. Mm. Boom, boom, boom. That's just, I, uh, the soundtrack was terrible all throughout the movie and this was just horrendously out of sync music. Yep. Right, give me, give me string and instruments going pretty fast. Give me whatever. Give me something that's stressful. Not don't give me tubular bells. Too. Like <laughs> if you look at something like, I know you don't like this movie, but um, Uncut Gems, the music and the choice of uh, like a drum beat going through the whole movie, and it's like it, it just it makes you nervous the whole way through because that's the point of the movie. Mm. And this is supposed to you know give you a bit of anxiety, but it doesn't work. No, it's the wrong music. It's like somebody's ringing your doorbell. <laughs> yeah. Mildly annoying. That's about it. Yeah. That's all. But Birdman is a good example of using the drum beat, drum beats mm. to, to convey stress. Anyway, very quickly, she finds Felix and he loans the phone to her. And it's, it's I'm on the third line of my notes, I'm just saying convos are hard to follow backstory. So she's having a conversation with her mom. He's. She's he's, he's giving out about, crap about some person who killed a shepherd's pie. Shepherd's pie. We constantly hear stuff about packaging of shepherd's pie. Okay, what are you? Are you a chef? Are you a dad? Are you? I don't know what's going on here. Uh, yeah, it's well, basically then he's he, he goes to the toilet because he's he's getting stressed out listening to her conversation with her mom. She's getting stressed out talking to her mom. He comes out and f- promptly faints and needs his pills. So he has a bit of an episode. He goes to the doctor and the doctor's going, oh, you know, uh, you don't want your heart to be beating fast and hard or whatever. And some such nonsense. Here, have these pills. Nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. And so if he comes out and she's waiting for him. And so con- there's this thread throughout the pr- plot where she's trying to tell her him something when you're in the infirmary and she's constantly cut off or she doesn't bother finishing it and so then we're led to believe later on in the movie she talked to his ex-wife and you really didn't care that much when we got to the actual point of what happened when he was in the infirmary yeah i didn't get that either and i, I the, it in my head that should be made a little bit more obvious maybe show a snippet of the conversation she has because you don't get it. You don't care why she needs to talk to him. So 
Meh. Yeah. At this and point. He, yeah, and so they're saying, all right, bye, bye again. It's like they said goodbye 20 times in this movie. Mm. He gets a phone call then. Like, so there's maybe 20 phone calls in the first 10 minutes. It's constantly sort of annoying because you're not in on the, on the other half. And so he gets a phone call from Nadia, who we haven't got a clue who it is at this point. He then is on, we hear what his side of the, the conversation and he mentions Sergio and blah, blah, blah. And say, like, all right, bye, whatever. Then he sees Juliet with another dude outside in the whatever concourse at a Burger King or something. And he goes out and goes, uh, Nadia just called Sergio's coming to the airport. He's angry. He's going to be so, violent or something just just a while back it, it was actually nadia called but then sabine called oh jesus <laughs> i know just to be awkward sabine called who was a friend of rose and said uh you want to watch out sergio's on his way and he's 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 a bit punchy <laughs> and he is he's a, he's an ass hat he comes out mm. but then yeah he's obviously saying this in front of sergio and, he goes, and she goes no this is sergio and sergio Whoops. satan dick Oh, he's a, he's a right uh, cock sportif, like, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's, he, he ain't a nice guy, um, yeah. but uh, he, he has a bit of a spaz out in, in the cafe and he demands that uh, Felix has a drink and then he gets, he's getting all kind of, you know, he's not nice and he's saying horrible crap about uh, Rose right in front of her face to Felix. Yeah. Uh, she storms off and then he starts punching the table and hurts his hand. Yeah. cuts it and she comes running over to help and the first time I didn't hate any characters in this movie is where he goes ah no don't just go on he's, he's a dick yeah, yeah, yeah. back off yeah back off yeah so that ends and we have this stupid song montage of oh god <laughs> Felix flying well kind of thinks he's uh, flying thinks he's flying we have Rose shopping and putting lots of makeup on which becomes a very common occurrence in the thing she's a beautician by the way everybody you yeah. don't really kind of know this until I don't know 75% through it through the movie anyway he's not he falls asleep and he wakes up and he's still in Paris and he quickly meets her again he's off to the Hilton Hotel and says yeah come with you want to come with and sleep in my bedroom stranger yeah, it's kind of a weird thing, um, but okay. Um, yeah, at this point, just before um, he invites her, he, he's having this spaz out again on the phone, giving out about French people, and even though he is a French person, which is weird, yeah. uh, and giving out about transport and, you know, uh, nothing works in this country, blah, 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 blah. Um, he's a bit cranky. He's cranky, and that's why he's got bad blood pressure and faints constantly, which another fainting episode is coming up soon. But yeah. on the way, I think she says something, oh, when you're in the infirmary, and then gets cut off again. So again, we have this annoying sort of exposition that we she doesn't, she doesn't get out of her mouth, basically. And you're kind yeah. of going, well, what the hell happened in the infirmary? Yeah, just just... Just bloody tell him. Don't let him yeah. cut you off if it's important. Yeah. So they're in the hotel room and this the hotel room scene pretty much is the chunk of the movie, wouldn't you agree? <sighs> yeah, but unfortunately it's not very good. <laughs> no. Like if Tarantino was involved in the script writing, I think it would be pretty entertaining, I'm guessing, but... Yeah, well, yeah. If, if you got an entire 70% of the movie, say, is set in one room, the dialogue needs to be dynamic it needs to be sharp it needs to be engaging this is none of that it, it's it's them scoring points against each other for an hour and uh, it's a complicated <laughs> process that's not delivered well it's really so pretty much yeah so he has a faint on the hotel and the bathroom floor and just stays in there and sleeps there and she's just out in the room twiddling her thumbs not really caring that he hasn't yeah well, she, she falls asleep in, she uh, has a nap yeah yeah, yeah. then basically he comes out, well, everything's fine. So I've just got a bunch of words with commas in between them. So this is my uh, memory of the entire thing. Okay, they call up room service. She's like, oh, no, I don't want anything. But, oh, okay, I'll have some. Uh, yeah, because he, he goes to order her the same as what he got just because, shut up, you're having something. Um, and she yeah. goes, okay, fair enough. I'll have, blah, I can't remember. Didn't write that. Terrine. Oh, a terrine, yes, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, Veal terrine or something, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is around the time. This Actually, one thing that annoyed me is that he orders a baguette with uh, jambon, uh, which is a very Parisian thing, 
and the translation that, that I seen said French bread. <laughs> wow, well, la baguette. Uh, well, yeah, but just, you know, there's a lot of French effing bread. <laughs> baguette, ah, French bread. <laughs> just say baguette, then. It's that's pretty much the translation yeah, I, of baguette I, is baguette. Yeah, you don't you don't need to translate baguette to French bread. <laughs> God, to, uh, sorry, that, that just pan. really annoyed me for no good, really good reason. <laughs> They have issues. They're they're contrasting characters. They have inter- They've they've temperature yeah. dislikes. He's he, he's got a bucket of OCD. Let's be honest. Yeah, and phobias and doesn't like smells. Triggers. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. like smells. Um, she's putting on makeup. She's spraying her hair constantly. He's in the frozen food business. This came out here. She's a British that came out here. She, he says something flippant like, "Oh, you need Mister Clean to take off all your makeup." Yeah. So, so he's been a bit of a dick now for the last 20 minutes at this point i, I write it down oh felix is a dick <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh then they're they have a bit of a tiff and argument over the meal or whatever and no no he um splashes vinaigrette all over she's whisking up a vinaigrette and he's going what the hell are you doing that's not what you do you don't use all of the vinaigrette. you're an idiot and then she stands up and he goes to pick it up and drops something on the vinaigrette and it jumps up into her face. Yeah, and that's the comedy bit too there. That's yeah, the again, not funny, just awkward and crap. Yeah, there's, he's on a phone call at that point about some other frozen chicken dinner as well. So <laughs> chicken bechamel. Yeah. Uh, she's, they're flicking through TV channels at some point and... Porn th- pops up. But then, but she says, "No, no, keep it here, keep it here." And oh, it's a history channel. Oh yeah, yeah, my parents were communists. What? <laughs> yeah, and she what? starts crying at the history channel. It's just these sort of ideas and choices in the plot is like they don't really resonate. They don't make sense, and they don't make me want to care more because it's a very random. It's very random. Yeah, they, now, they, th- th- there was a kind of an important piece as they're having dinner where he asks i guess um how long were you we with sergio i think this mm. kind of sparks a bit of a heated argument with the pair of them because it's it's a sore point and he's yeah. it becomes clear now that he's just been dumped by his wife uh, nine months ago nine months ago yeah. um and he is annoyed with rose because of the dumping method is the same uh Sergio's dumping right. method is the same as he got. Yes, empty apartment. Empty apartment. And, you know, okay, that's that's projection, dude. That's not her, her fucking problem. <laughs> yeah, but he, he has an issue of going, well, you just, you know, you faked the last, you know, long, long time of being in a relationship. You, weren't, you didn't love him, so you're just faking being happy with him or whatever. Yeah, but, you know, none of, none of his goddamn business. Yeah, you know, he took he took it personally very quickly. He did, didn't he? Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Um, no, that's fine. So yeah, he, she's basically saying you know, you hate people, don't you? So yeah, he does, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he I think as, he agrees with that as well. He both hates and likes being around people. Yeah. Actually, I I, I associate with that as well. <laughs> I can hate people. Yeah. Yeah. Apart from so being around pre- people, I can do without that. Yeah, so they're sort of, I don't know, they're in circles around each other verbally yeah. and it's just not clever enough to actually hit them Yeah, off. And, and they seem to, every now and then, they make a bit of a truce and then they start fighting again. And I, I don't know, is this supposed to be part of the comedy? Yeah, it's not funny. It just goes around in circles and doesn't really progress the plot at all. No. I think when she has the vinaigrette spilled on her, his wife calls and she's Nadia. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and then he pretends, oh, I can't hear you, because she seems to be going, yeah, you're not coming to the funeral, you're coming to my, yeah, because it's her mother's funeral, by the way. Yeah, That's another thing that kind of gets developed. We kind of get a sense of that at the start, but yeah, it's sort of Yeah, and I think that the the backstory is is developed over half-heard phone conversations, and that is just, as 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 a device in the movie, it's just infuriating. Right, yeah. So, yeah, so at some point, like, she goes into the bathroom to clean up the vinaigrette, and he's about to take a pill, but doesn't take it, then breaks her mirror, and snoops, looks at her passport, and tastes the vinaigrette, and says to her, oh, it's very good, very, very good. Yeah. And then he, she comes out in a bathrobe, and he just stares at her, just suddenly realizing, oh, she's lovely. 
Yeah, he's a bit of fucking. <laughs> just if he doesn't cop yeah. that she's good looking because she's got makeup on. Right now she's in a bathrobe. I'm sorry I can't hear you. I'm wearing a towel. <laughs> <laughs> Simpsons go there. Very yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Not far away. Um, I kind of found maybe one percent interesting was her referring back to the Mister Clean comment, going, "Hey, it rolled off me. I can take these punches," you know. Yeah, it did show a little uh, bit more depth to her character in that. Uh, in that she, yeah, she hears the insults, but she ignores them. Yeah, and then she finally reveals that. Oh, when you're in the infirmary, I spoke to Nadia. She doesn't want to see you. Yeah. That's the yeah. reveal, the big reveal. And then he's a bit annoyed about that. Yeah, and so it's not, and then he kind of mentions something about well. Nadia basically said, you know, if I became a man I couldn't, you, you can't share a breakfast with. Le petit déjeuner. Le petit déjeuner. All right, yeah, she, basically, so she she likes, yeah. his, likes his silence time over breakfast, so that was yeah. the problem. That's why he got divorced twice or something. I, yeah, I just don't have breakfast. <laughs> if you, as soon as <laughs> you have breakfast, you get divorced, you know? Yeah, exactly. Um, all right, she basically says, I'm out of here which is suddenly abrupt. I thought she was just going out to party or something. She's like, yeah, I'm out of here. So she heads off, gets into the taxi. She, he runs out. What does he say to her? I don't even know. I kind of lost it. He, he gives that. out crap to her saying, where the hell are you going? Like, are you going to go back to him, Sergio? Oh, and, yeah, she, yeah, and she's yeah. like, no, no, I'm going to go home. And he went, no, you can't go back home. Your mom's a now bag as well. Um, <laughs> which is a nice thing to say about somebody's mom yeah. you just met. <laughs> Does he say something like, um, if it wasn't for me, would you have gone back? And she kind of goes, eh, maybe. No, I don't think so. Maybe uh, that wasn't here. but I think it, that's later on, actually, yeah. yeah when when well, they're getting on. Okay. Briefly. <laughs> anyway, they head in and he basically finds his way into the, the kitchen that's closed and starts making dinner for both of them. Which, you know what? It could be a great scene if this script was any good. So I, you know... I, I'll but be there's honest, no, I, I hated the movie up there. I kind of this was less annoying to me. Yeah, yeah but scene. but but you know what? In a more skilled director's hands. Oh, this could be a great it, scene, yeah. They could give me a close up of the food preparation as well, please. Yeah. Give me a close up of faces, but also give me a cut up of the cuts that he's doing, the you know, basting yeah. of the sauce or whatever. Give me some texture, give me some exactly. emotion, and it would have been very nice. You, you want it, you want the audience to almost be able to taste the food. Because it's yeah. important at this point in my head. Yeah, um, and, but just the in, the entire scene is shot mid shot. It's like just half bodies yeah, sitting yeah. down, you know, top halves of torsos. Nothing, nothing exciting with the camera shots at all. But I don't know. Maybe they didn't have the skills to develop the, the I, I, chef I genuinely skills. think that 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 is the they didn't have the skills and they didn't take the time to choose the correct shots or to plan it out enough. It, and listen, you've got two good actors here. Like yeah. Julia Binoche is a great actress and Jean Renault can do some great stuff. So you could yeah. have had a great scene there. Yeah. No, I liked it. It was cozy and it was different and it in a in a more developed plot line and story. It could have been a nice in another... this movie, this scene shines. Yeah. But this another... movie is dog poo. So. Yeah, it's another opportunity to develop the storyline and to give a backstory of the characters. Like he mm. tells the story about his dad, but not not liking his food, whatever, and he never, he hasn't, doesn't speak to his parents. And later on, it seemed, seemed a bit fucking, extreme, you know. Your dad give out about the meal you just made, and you're like, right, I'm, I'm leaving home the next day. That's it. Yeah, and then it suddenly comes full loop for some reason, where I was very confused near the end of the movie about what happens with him and his dad. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really expand upon it. It just shows him looking at his dad, but we can talk about that later. Yeah, it's stupid. <laughs> uh, she admits she looked at his passport too. <laughs> We get the exposition finally that she's actually won an Oscar alternative for being a good beautician. <laughs> yeah, she got the uh, the golden hair brush makeup or brush or makeup something. Brush. I don't know. Yeah, I, I I don't know much about the, the technicalities of beautician work. Yeah, um, so he gets uh, summoned halfway through dinner. Going, Concierge Yo, kicks the door in. Munich flight, flight. no. <laughs> Get out of here. So yep. there's more shit music where he's going for the Au revoir. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, So then we see a, a, a couple of scenes with Rose. 
She's in bed. She wakes up and calls Sabine for his number, his for his phone, because he took his phone, basically, obviously. Then she goes for a naked swim. Yeah, that was weird. That's the French for you. Sacre bleu, huh? And she just rifles through the spa, smelling all the smells. and uh, it, it feels somewhat illegal, doesn't it? Just to kick the door into the spa effectively and start taking stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's, again, there's opportunities there. You know, she's driven by smells and compositions of smells. I, I don't know. I, there, there's, something, there's something that could have been evolved here without the crap plot. Anyway, she's like in the room and he yeah. bursts in. He suddenly knows how to find her in a, a spa that she shouldn't be in. Yeah, I have that written down here and it, 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 it vexed me greatly. Um, <laughs> like how how does he know she's in there what, gps fitted to her or something i don't know um yeah it, yeah it makes no sense like if she was in the room fine yeah and i don't know they're sort of half kissing half hugging mon dieu half, mon dieu half sm- smelling each other and then his wife, Nadia, calls. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, oh, yeah. I know, I'm so happy to come. Um, they, they, I just, I was so happy to come back for two hours just to be with you, blah, blah, blah. And something about, what was your house like? Yeah, um, I don't really, I didn't really get this. This was the house she shared with Sergio when he was talking about it as well, which is an unusual <laughs> thing to ask. Right, uh, but it was like, it was, it was, greenhouse with blue shutters right yeah okay let's leave it at that and let's come back to it in a few minutes uh, but again as, as a plot device i'm like what <laughs> yeah it was weird it was, again crap dialogue anyway they basically we cut to their uh, an airplane montage of a dozen airplanes including concord which wasn't flying in 2002 i don't believe was it not i, I wrote down concord just out of <laughs> but i don't i don't think it was i don't know when that last fatal flight was but anyway it was weird seeing it yeah um but there's it, it's just a, it's a very bad directorial production choice to have there's probably roughly they show 20 different clips of airplanes just moving around and taking off and they're lying in bed fully clothed they just probably hugging it out yeah so uh then they go to the airport and are going to have breakfast together he goes to get newspapers he looks up at her. She looks down at him. She gives him the old she, Irish goodbye, though, doesn't she? She gives the old Irish goodbye. She pisses off. <laughs> that, no, I Which thought I was delighted with. I don't. Yes, leave it like this. This is a great way to well, end the movie. Not exactly. But here's how bad the plot was developed. I had no clue where she was going. <laughs> you didn't know she was going to uh, Acapulco. No, no. It was mentioned. He said, "Oh, you should go to Mexico or something." Oh, she got a job in Acapulco, um, in a hotel as a beautician in in the hotel. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what she's. She wasn't just going to Acapulco for the crack, like. No, I thought she just made a choice just to run away or something. I knew she got a job somewhere, but I, I had no clue at this stage. What, of the one of the things story. that when 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 he asked her why did you leave Sergio, uh, yeah. she said yeah, I yeah, got yeah. a job. Right, I remember that. But then at the end of the movie, I was going, "What the fuck is she doing?" <laughs> Yeah, listen, it wasn't all that obvious what she was doing anyway. I did I had no, no idea where she was going. Then she's on the plane. I'm like, what? Oh, okay. Uh, cool. Now, there's, again, there's something here that could have been explained and or developed more. It's the it's breakfast for two, and it's harking back to Nadia's comment why she left Felix. Yeah. He's not somebody you could spend breakfast with. She left. We're supposed to think as the audience, all right, she's realized he isn't the type of person to spend breakfast with. And that should be and, enough. And that should be enough, but it's not. Basically, we get... Because I, I, I actually thought that would have been a nice... That, that's a nice motif to finish with. That's good. That, that ties it up. It's a very good motif to tie it up with. I was like going, actually, that's okay. The first smart that. bit in the movie, and they don't use it. No, because right now there's a massive montage of him getting a car and driving <sighs> somewhere, her getting a plane. It lasts forever. I fa- I'll, I'll be honest, I may have sped this up a bit quicker. <laughs> this bit <laughs> took five minutes. It took forever. Yeah, He's, it, it's, it's a completely uninteresting montage. But here's the deal. I thought he was going to see her mom or something because... I knew, okay, he's going to look for the house with the green and the blue shutters. That's what I thought as well. I thought he was going to see her house. 
And yeah. then you see it and you're like, oh, there's her house. Yeah. And then he sees some earth landing. Oh, no, wait, that's his dad. He's a chef. Oh, <laughs> what the okay. fuck? Why? Is he living in the house that Rose grew up in or was just sold to a hotel mm-hmm. or something? Maybe no their brother and sister. I don't know. Oh, that's another thing. I was thinking, okay, is this going to be a family thing where he's he's actually long lost brother? And- <laughs> see, again, that would have been brilliant. <laughs> that would have been out of left field. Hilarious, like movie. yeah. Uh, but no, no, nothing so interesting. No, but so he meets his dad, then he goes to a pay phone and calls Air France and goes, yeah, can you just stand in the airport in Acapulco with a sign and give this person that a uh, message? And uh, By the way, all during this, the theme from Midnight Cowboy has been played in the background. I is, love that song. I love it too, but this is ridiculous. It doesn't fit. No. It really doesn't. It, it doesn't set the right tone. It doesn't give the right emotion it's no. stupid <laughs> rose is in the airplane removing makeup at this stage mm. he's calling her his phone which rose has you know she never gave it back to him um he's, he's doing a loss in, yeah he's doing a loss in translation thing because we don't hear what he's saying to her it's there's lots of midnight cowboy harmonica over it he she gets to the Fucking Acapulco, Puckle, 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 Puckle. The, the Acapulco, Acapulco uh, going loco in Acapulco if, if you only. stay too long. Yeah. Um, she does not stay too long. No, she gets that the note is given to her, and then now oh, here's the pin of my phone. Whatever. She then listens to his converse, his phone call in the car, but all you he- see is the subtitles. I didn't yeah. hear him. No, I couldn't hear him either. Um, I thought it was just I me. Was like, um, yeah, I was like going, is this the right, is this right, the, what, the way this is doing? Or is this an error or something? Is this a weird directorial choice to make where we don't hear and we just see the subtitles? Because what happens in the French original version of this movie? I that, yeah, that's a great question. Because if you can't hear him talking and she's just sitting there laughing onto the phone, you're missing a chunk of plot. <laughs> Yeah, but by the way, as well as this one, she's in the taxi now. It's changed from the Midnight Cowboy song to I Try by Macy Gray. Oh, dear God. And that, again, does not fit. N- just none of the music fit. Well, hang on, I'm sorry. It's I Try to Say Goodbye. Uh, That's the point. <laughs> yeah, but emotionally, it doesn't fit. No, it doesn't. It's terrible. But it's 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 up. she's listening to the message on the phone, and she's smiling and laughing, and... His one of yeah. his last things he says. Oh, and by the way, I, I'm totally in love with you. Come on. Yeah. And now both of these people have decided to like he says he's gonna give up on his um his food business in, in the in the phone call effectively, and she's abandoning her job that she just got to get away from her last, you know, punchy boyfriend slash lover. And <laughs> They're throwing it all away to spend the rest of their life with somebody they've spent 12 hours with. Right. Yeah. No, hang Much on a more believable though. is one of them says, I know you're grand. <laughs> no, I left you at the breakfast table because I couldn't eat a breakfast with you as a type of yes. person, just like your ex-wife. Bye. Yeah. Stick the knife in. Like. <laughs> <laughs> Something you're up busted. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, Bro- you know. Break my mirror, will you? Yeah, and here's your start of the bad luck. Uh, I always, I love Groundhog Day. It's probably my top five movies yeah. of all time, maybe top 10. I always had an issue with, he had a lifetime to fall in love with Andy McDowell. She didn't. And I always found that in the last iteration, the last Groundhog Day, she she did. But the entire plot and storyline and dialogue made me believe it. Yeah. Yeah. And there's humor. <laughs> oh, f- yeah. Bag so bags. much humor. The romantic comedy, that's what it's supposed to, it's supposed to make you laugh. This was a romantic comedy, apparently. It doesn't hit like Groundhog Day. <laughs> Morons, your bus is leaving. <laughs> yeah. So I gave, I gave the plot 0. 0.5 out of 5. I thought it sucked. Oofs. Oh, 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 sacre bleu. Uh, <laughs> I give it 1.5. It, it's a plot. Somebody wrote stuff down on a piece of paper. Well done. Um, I probably, you know what? I haven't just talked about it for as long as we just d- done that. I'm thinking, I, 
Yeah, I'm dropping it down to one. It doesn't deserve 1.5. Yeah. Makes sense. I'm angry again. God damn it. Yeah, you're angry. <laughs> you're seeing rouge. Um, okay, so the most points I'm giving is for acting. I'm giving 2.5. It's average acting from good actors. Mm. I, I, I give it I give it three on it. I thought there were scenes where the two guys, you know, they, they show genuine emotion. Felix is, or John knows Felix is a genuinely OCD sort of awkward character. It's well played. And Julia yeah. Pinoche is quite good as well. So, yeah, acting's grand. They did the best they could with what was put in front of them. Yeah. Um, she's got more. Well, above average movies in our in our back catalogue, like Jean Reno, yeah. we know from Ronan and Leon, Da Vinci Code, I guess. Mm, uh, yeah. She's I've actually seen Three Colors Red. I forgot she was, was the main person in that. English Patient, I haven't seen. Chocolat, I haven't seen. I heard it's I've, I've seen nice. both those. Stuff. But you know, I was made watch both of them. To be honest, there wouldn't be movies that I would jump out to watch. But both are actually decent movies. Pretty good. Uh, English Patient does go on for about four weeks, <laughs> but it's still quite a good movie. Our buddy Rafe. Yeah, good old Rafe. Yeah. Um, soundtrack, I'm giving 0. 0.5. I thought it was absolute garbage and didn't do anything to make me love the plot anymore. And it probably should have done a better job of hiding the plot if there was better music. I, Midnight Cowboy, when he's making a phone call, it's absolute <laughs> travesty of the use of that song. <laughs> I just annoyed the crap. And I love the song. Love it. Yeah. But it needs to be put in the right place. And that's not the right place for it. Yeah. I give I give a one. Yeah. Because I like the song. <laughs> yeah, like Fate No More used to use mid, the, the theme from Midnight Cowboy as their intro song for many years in their live mm. shows. And now it's ruined for me. Now all you can see is Jean Reno chatting in a phone box. Chatting in a phone box without hearing his voice. Um, production, I'm giving 1.5. I thought a lot of the choices from script to plot to stupid montages to yeah. dialogue just were not developed. And I think there's a nucleus of a good movie in this uh, plot. It just, you know, we'll, we'll remake this and we'll have close-ups of the food in the kitchen and that'll bump it up quite a lot in the uh, production value but right now it's a 1.5 out of 5 production value for me it's below average tend to agree uh 1.5 is what i've got down here as well it's that montage of the airplanes what were they thinking <laughs> like it, it's a romantic comedy i don't need to watch a minute long montage of airplanes landing and taking off it's, and it's like what? okay we understand the strike is over the, the bad weather's moved on you know what what would work just perfectly here and every time i talk about ideas for movies and you know i really think i could actually be a director of a movie but <laughs> instead <laughs> instead of five minutes of airplanes leaving just give me the traditional clicker clacker departures for board and all the cancelled flights change into the departure times they, they already used that as well uh, earlier in the movie when she's she's sitting there looking at the uh departure tables and they are all told to cancelled so that, that was go. used use it reverse again. it reverse the footage yeah and then it's a nice you know it some symmetry let's use that yeah <sighs> so yeah i've never watched a movie that made me feel after it like the title so i felt jet lagged after watching jet lag yeah, I felt tired and annoyed. <laughs> it's like like long distance travel. That's what it felt like. Yeah. So I suppose the title is very apt. Yeah, yeah. Um, Lou Lemonick gave a twenty five out of a hundred in the New York Post. Hmm. He said an alarmingly unfunny French comedy where the two main characters are constantly yakking on a cell phone at an airport. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it, really, isn't it? I think our friend just watched the first 20 minutes and went, all right, this is what it's going to be like. I'm not going to like happy bothered with the rest of it. Yeah. And, and, and I feel his, um, you know, his, his struggle there because it was a bit of a chore at times. Yeah. Um, Stanley Kaufman in the new Republic gave it 80 out of a hundred. Hmm. He said this French pastry, huh? 
directed by Daniel Thompson, who wrote it with her son Christopher, is a meat cute comedy in Excelsis, or very near Excelsis. Excelsis. Oh, oh, oh. Um, Excelsis in, I just know him in Latin. Excelsius. Excelsior in Half Life. Excelsior. <laughs> it, it's, yeah, no, that dude's a jerk. Yeah, well, so if, if we ignore that one, Desson Thompson in the Washington Post gave it 80 and said, rather wonderful to sit through. It's fluff with flavor and a cell phone. Wow. Just wow. Yeah. Your cell phone's the problem. <laughs> yes. Cell phone's the biggest problem in this movie. <laughs> yeah. I wish both of the cell phones were flushed down toilets. Then we would have actually been able to know what was going on and the backstories and what was happening in their lives. Sometimes movies have show the other person on the other end of the phone. Wow, that's an amazing idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stick that one in your ideas pipe and smoke uh, it. In fairness, they would have had to pay more actors, and considering how much more money or how uh, much more money that would have cost them, and the money that they did not take in the box office, yeah, probably better that they didn't. Exactly. All right, let's say au revoir to <sighs> jet lag. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and let's. Uh, randomly pick another number from Metacritic's 15,000 plus movies and let's see what we come up with. We have movie 2090. 2090. Oh. All right, so movie 2090 is a movie called Hermia and Helena from 2017. Who would what now? Exactly. It runs for an hour and 27 minutes, so uh, should be okay. Here's the summary. Camila, a young Argentine theatre director, travels from Buenos Aires to New York for an artist residency to work on a new Spanish translation of Shakespeare's A Midsummer's Night Dream. Upon her arrival, she quickly, quickly realises that her work isn't compensating for the loss of her friends and the lover she left behind. When she begins to receive a series of mysterious postcards from Danielle, a former participant in the same residency, Camila second guesses her artistic endeavours and begins to seek answers about her past. What? Does that sound fun for you? That just sounds confusing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has a meta score of 79 and a user score of TBD because oh, not a lot of people have watched no. this. Yes. So it's directed by Matthias Pinero, who has directed a couple of things, but not anything I know of. And I'm guessing this is in Spanish, but it doesn't say it here. So the 7.9, you said that might be a bit of a... A bit of a fib. 79. Um, Boston Globe. The Globe gave it 100. Film Stage 91. New Yorker 90. Oh, okay. It, it, it possibly yeah. does not suck. No, it goes down to 50. Roger Ebert.com gave it 50, but the well, majority of them are from 70 upwards. So we'll give it a go and see what happens. So we will watch her, Mia, and Helena in episode 53 of 15K Plus Random Movie Reviews. Keep on reviewing and liking where you're listening to this podcast and we'll see you on the next episode. Bye-bye. Au revoir. <laughs> Shoshana.